Thank you so much, Andy, and welcome everybody. Uh, so we are going to start, and we are going to start now. Okay, this is my town hall in Manresa. So I just want to welcome everybody to, to my city, and it's a really nice city, a little bit cold these days. And it's really great to, to be able to be in this conference to, that to all the organizers, their board, and everybody involved on being able to do this uh, conference in these situations. I really want to say thanks to everybody. And this talk, okay, it's the guillotine talk. Uh, we are going to go across all the changes that we did this year. Uh, it's not kind of one of the best years in guillotine. Um, life because we've been uh, really busy with the other situations, but we have a lot of things to say and also the roadmap and mostly we are going to focus on use cases. So, because one of the um, the feedbacks I've been receiving that I think that are more interesting is uh, people doesn't understand what exactly is guillotine and what is it, what is it for, no, mostly. Uh, I even heard that it, because it's based on Postgres, it's, it's uh, an SQL engine that you can uh, use tables and columns, and it's not like that. No. So we'll go through all these situations. So let me share my, my presentation. Cool. So, uh, first, who we are. Uh, I'm Ramon Navarro, co-founder and CTO of uh, Flaps and, uh, and Iskra, own foundation member and guillotine framework team member. And I invite also. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordi Gurel, technical uh, administrator, guillotine framework member and also contributor on some of those old contributions. Let's go. Cool. Thank you, Jordi. Um, so first we're going to start with what's what's guillotine and this is going to be a really basic kind of headlines about what, what is it and what is it not. So first Plone is a Plone REST API compliant. It means that where most of the things that you can do with Plone REST API you can do with guillotine. So most of the projects that you can build on top of that will be able to be used with Guillotine as a background. Second, it's a tree traversal hierarchical security like Plone Zoo architecture. So you store objects on a tree and you set security in a tree and it's inherited and de-inherited. That's easy. That's the same as we are used to know. It's the same Plone Zoo uh, basic lines that we have. So what's not? So we've reduced all the layers from Zoop, CMF, Plone in just one package. One package that has a schema, has the, the in order to configure the adapters, subscribers, all the rest serialization of the database, the transaction, how we are serializing the database, all in one package. So it's easy to follow up and to understand without uh, more than just one layer. There is no server-side rendering. It means that uh, we are not rendering templates. Well, we have an engine in the Jinja to render some templates if you want, but our focus is to be an API. So we are a really fast API. It's YAML-based global configuration, which means that we are not storing things on a local registry of components, on a tree, on the container. We have the registry of configuration, the same as Plum, but we don't have, um, uh, templates stored on the database. We have content type stored on the database. Everything is propagated through a global configuration. So all the containers in the same name, in the same process, has the same configuration. It's you. We are losing some functionality from Bloom, the uh, option to customize each of the containers. But at the same time, we are winning uh, a way of being much productive in order to be deterministic about what's the configuration of that environment. Well, it's uh, our underlying layer. It's an SQL and cloud services. 
that we can store files on a file system, we can store files on S3, we can store files on Google Cloud storage. We can have uh, Postgres as a, a database, Cockroach as a database. And so all the tools that already exist around these underlying layers help us to keep the backup, the replication, scaling the, the application, wherever you need them. Oh yeah, and one of the most important things is that we are saying ourselves, don't reinvent the wheel. We, there is a lot of things that are practices. For example, we implemented workflows and we say, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just take the basic concepts from workflows and clone and just we implement with our interfaces. For the web server, now right now we are using Ubicorn and we thought, okay, we can change our request object to use the started one because we don't need to maintain our own request object. So we decided to, that on Guillotine 7, I'm going to talk more about that later, it's going to be a starter place. So basically, less is more. It's our main focus, trying to do less things to be to do more things and to be more productive in order to develop our APIs. So, 2020, what we did this year? We released uh, Guillotina 6, as Eric still already said on the on the keynote. It was a great effort from Jordi Massif, Jordi Kuleil, Nathan, a lot of other contributors uh, to push for an ASCII uh, interface so we can plug to Ubicorn and Ipacorn easily. So we don't need to keep the, the HTTP dependency that we were keeping in order to provide the HTTP server. We added workflows, a really basic implementation, but just enough to, to do most of the use cases that we are facing. We have Jinx templating in case that somebody wants to render. There is somebody who wants to implement also uh, with Chameleon, but we will see if it's finished the uh, implementation soon. Uh, we have a full open API validation system. We can uh, push all the information from the API to, into Swagger. We have a, a flow to provide user registration, resetting the password with email validation, we integrate with vocabularies, a really nice feature called GMI that George is going to explain you later. We did some performance improvements and a lot of bug fixing in order to provide more stability and more reliability on there is also, Guillotine is not only the, the Python package, it's also an ecosystem of different um, frameworks or software, so software's branch is one of them. It's built by, mostly by uh, Airbnb Health or built by Airbnb Health, and it's uh, an Angular toolkit in order to, to develop applications. It's not a UI that you can use it by itself, but it provides most of the needed things in order to you, that you build your own applications on top of Guillotine. And the good thing is that it's also compatible with Chrome, so you can do applications that work with both environments. It has uh, ingestion schema forms generated automatically, uh, Bastanago UI widgets, a traversal render with, with Angular, and all the CRUD supporting for editing and uh, getting all the objects. There is also an effort to, to use Voto onto Guillotina. You can ping uh, Victor later to ask which is the status. He said me that it's nearly 80% of the functionality working. Of course, you cannot create content types through the web with Guillotina because we want to enforce that a configuration is done, is done through, the, through the YAML configuration file. We added some add-ons. For example, now we support a lab. Woo! <laughs> so, because we needed to support some all clone sites that we were uh, with LDAP on the line, we needed to develop a, a driver for all that. It's, it's, uh, it's done. <laughs> we have also NATS to have a streaming support, NumPy to support fields with uh, NumPy uh, values, and uh, Postgres PG, uh, PG fields to store a field of the an object into a table. Okay, now in order to explain uh, about what's Guillotina React and Guillotina GMI, Jordi. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guillotina React is the project I started as to, because when I started at, at, at Job, I found that the Job management in the frame something pretty cool. 
And I say, okay, we need something like this for uh, Guillotina. And I start rebuilding something. And then I figure that perhaps it should be more a toolkit that I can extend and, I, and we can extend and that we can maintain. And that's how it evolved. <laughs> right now, it's a, the management that it's shipped by the files of Guillotina, but also it's a library that you can plug on your own React project. And there are some decisions around to, to, to be able to, to use it like this. Like there is no, no routing because you can plug on whatever router you use on React. There is a, but, and also there are some um, job ideas uh, in it. There is a traversal, there is a registry to register views, to write components, to be able to customize everything on the context. And also, working around the context. Let's see a demo of it. Okay, let's log in. Okay, cool, here we are looking at the DB and then we, we can create containers to reach more or less to one side. Okay. Uh, it's in a container, we have the basic infrastructure to manage uh, tabs. You can customize the tabs, you can add ones, you can manage permissions, behaviors, install ROMs. Right now, we we'll install a new folder that one is provided by the Latina as a complete file cut. And we can check on the site that we have a computer. I show a user folder where we can start creating users. Let's get one. For example, this model is something we want to write for um, every content that we have. It's, there is a registry, you just register a form, and this form will allow you to go into it. Uh, also, you can add items like the flow around the context, and there is a, a enforcement around the context. But only the types you have, you can, you can be added in that context. Every content type, it has its own properties. You can edit them, and you can add behaviors behind them. For example, this content type does not have a, a, any extended behavior. We are just adding on the attachment, and then we can just add file and apply. It's still a bit um, simple, and, but we are using for all of the CMS. We are extending and um, bit by bit, to put in some things, some of the components of the part we are using and, and using. That's the reason. Perhaps it's a still a small and it's a still an alpha. For example, here we are adding permissions to the grid, like the new one to one, and it doesn't work. It's a bit different, and it's not showing the models with the, with the permissions, but we are just making this item uh, publicly accessible. You can You know, from the from the internet. There is also shared in place using the catalog. You know, you also has a catalog of one that is implemented through Postgres or also through Elastic. You can choose. And there is a batch actions for, for multiple items implemented. For example, we can create a new folder. Um, we can move it to another one. That's it, all that is here. <laughs> you can delay, you can remove, everything. Later I will show you more how, uh, how we have extended it and we will call it as a bowler, something more complex. Thank you so much, Verdi. Uh, and yeah, well, as, as I said, uh, the Linux is not only uh, CMS, uh, it's a uh, uh, framework, it's, it's more of its community of people also inside the Bloom community that we are really warm and really happy to be uh, 
in this, in this large community. And we decided to organize it with ourselves, kind of defining uh, which is the communication channel and how we are going to organize to decide where we are going and what are the features that we're going to implement and who is going to be with the process. So we have our GitHub channel, known as Latina. And there is also once a month, there is a framework team meeting that is mostly Nathan, uh, me, uh, Jordi, and the two Jordi, Jordi Correa, Jordi Lucy. And then there is also uh, co owners on the Latina repo. So any pull request from any of us needs to be validated that somebody from the other, from one of these three people, Jordi, me, or Nathan. So we decided to organize ourselves to be a proper team inside the room. So this is a bit the state of what we've been doing this year. As you see, there is not a lot, but we are so happy about uh, it because we were able to use it on projects and production with a really great results, and that's what we are going to show you now. Which are the use cases that we've been doing that are closer to the clone uh, kind of environment uh, and a less scale than maybe the ones that we've been showing at the end. So. For example, the first one, it's one that I'm quite happy because it's a cultural uh, project. No? Uh, it's, there is a music festival uh, with more than 300 uh, attendees, professional attendees, it's just a career for uh, other um, professionals to come to choose to see shows and choose which shows they want to hire or they want to uh, contract for the next year. So, uh, they have, we've been doing, Iskra has been doing this project for a long time. And we have a, long, a large phone site with all these flows with the artists where people send the proposals, we approvals, and all the process to buy tickets, to, to uh, comment about uh, the different shows, et cetera, et cetera. But this year was a really difficult one because the pandemic didn't allow them to do most of the things uh, physically and on, on, the, on the physical test. So they decided to be more digital and they needed to move more digital. So we needed to build something to provide a, a platform for professionals to be able to follow up and to be more integrated on this festival. Besides, they were not being able to come to see the, the show by itself. So they also wanted that um, between the professionals, there was an option to chat, like a, a, a group chat or a one-to-one -one chat where people were being able to reconnect and ask for more information about different shows, et cetera, et cetera. And they had a proposal, right? So what we decided to do is we decided that the Latinas uh, for, for building chats as the Sinca is really powerful. We decided to have a shared Zoom building across all of the flow site and Latina so we can uh, request uh, from the user Queries to the flow side and to the, to the Latina one. Then we uh, implemented an asynchronous push notification service on Latina to be able to push information into the browser and we created the chat system with that. And that was a really great solution because it allowed more than uh, 1,000 notifications to the professional people asking for details that, of shows that they've been seeing. We also uh, the, implemented a way of being able to organized different screens that were screened in professional services to the YouTube screen. So it was a way of following up uh, the, the show. Like for example, we have in this conference, this, this platform. So what was the end uh, result is that we have the all long side, the movie side well, with uh, a lot of content or more than five years of uh, information there. Then we have uh, a guillotina with an implemented push notification, user preferences, chat uh, with WebSocket and all the async IO movements. And then we have a new guillotina that we are uh, doing, uh, doing this year. That is the one that uh, is going to handle all the proposals, workflows. So in the future, we can replace the old phone infrastructure with a guillotina one. Uh, because at the end, on top, we will move we already moved the professional space uh, to, uh, to a React uh, browser web app, and we built uh, a management interface with the React, as you saw from, from Jordan before. For the web page, the, the CMS use case model used in 
flown. Uh, we were uh, we are evaluating to use photo or WordPress depending on what the client finally decides. But this could more comfortable. Um, the underlying layer, uh, the users, as you see, it's a file that one of the first of the works mentioned in the end of the page. So just to see the, how does it look like, this, if this is a progressive web app built with React, that you can uh, log in as a profession, professional people, person. And here you can check the old information from the 20, the last edition, or just present uh, information for the new edition. You can see all your messages that you have across all the years with all the different, uh, this is the demo user, so you will see a demo uh, chat. Um, then you can also see the, the notifications that the, the organization decided to send. These notifications are received as push notifications also in the system. And you can see all the tickets that you bought and your QR code in order to access the different uh, um, shows that were physically done. Then you can present for this year, and then you can prepare your own proposals, uh, you can your own artists, your own uh, representative of artists. There is lots of information that is the professional career. There is a lot of information that is being is asked in order to present a proposal here. And there is a lot of uh, validation process. So these flow forms are uh, done with one of the favorite React libraries it's called Formic. And for React people likes to create a lot of libraries for doing everything. And that's that one. So this is an example. And just the conclusions that we, 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 we released, we ended up the, uh, thinking is that it's really important that you go with your use case. Uh, in order to decide if you really need something a high level friendly, like maybe Tandiboko, that does uh, a lot of things that are bit as complex and could be generic, or you need to choose a CSS design framework like Materials or Semantic or whatever, and be really focused on choosing the good, the good fit to your project or to your use case in order to define exactly how much time or what do you gain from using it. There is also one library that we discovered, one of these frameworks of React libraries is called JSON Schema Form, which automatically renders forms and validates forms with JSON Schema. That it's quite useful to uh, validate the schemas that are defined in certain ways. And one of the quotes from one of our front end developers is that traversal REST API, Clone, and you know one, are amazing to develop fast from the front end point of view. But it needs to be well designed. The, the folderish uh, items, the way that you are nesting information needs to be well organized in a way that uh, front end people can use it, uh, that helps front end people to develop faster. There is another use case that Jordan is going to explain. Okay, that's one of the use cases. Yeah, I'm about four years ago, I started working with one of these tools and they have. Super all uh, job site and they are not evolving. Uh, starting the issues is a wine and commerce all of them. Um, we're all services by companies. We have around 60,000 products and more than 70,000 products. Then what exactly is that? They have the all, all, all joke with external methods, basic rates, external methods, and on a single monolith that is managing everything. The RP, the store, the marketing staff, all mix up. All templates mix up. Everything mix up and everything evolving from 12 years. And this is one of the reasons they can scale. And they cannot scale on Python synchronous because they are thinking we have to add like, last year of Black Friday, we have to add like 15 machines to cover all the traffic. And also they are not scaling on, on features because it's super hard to evolve something like this. 
Then we start on scripting the project to be able to, to, to add more teams and to start uh, evolving. And we are started looking at headless TMSs because, from my experience, it's the, the best way to evolve uh, on, on features. Uh, and then we found the Dina, we did something, it's not the same family as Joe, but Blonde, and I said, okay, we have to go with it. And we started working with the Dina. Uh, right now, all of our content is migrated to the Dina, and it's just started there on the tree. And also all the content side, like uh, the items for doing the phone parts, the, the newsletters we are creating, the, all the, everything related to content, it's a story to do with it. And we see, then we do the checkout application, also extracted from the of one, but as an API, and we have informed an XJS project, managed it from, from another team that it's working. But we still have to and we have to still evolve it because it has a lot of screens with a lot of functionality. Then we just created a new project to be a Gilotina, but it's not really the storage, it's just a Gilotina as a framework because we need to use Postgres, that is for really uh, business storage. And we use Gilotina with a CPG for Excel. We just added the QL as an artist in Maya. And it works quite well, and we are building a new admin with Gilotina React. That's a bit <laughs> the same as <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the last chat, but okay. Mm -hmm. I, so we can continue and go to the next one. Okay. Uh, let's see a small demo. This is the business, this is the form, the form patch. You can see there are a lot of logs and models. And almost everything is coming from Gilotin. The public website doesn't talk to Postgres for information. It just talks to Postgres for order processing and management of the cards. You can see we have a complex layout with a lot of components. There is a, a lot of uh, <laughs> nodes and it's hard to optimize. That's one of the things I'm a bit complaining. It, um, not sure if it's the best fit to use a React memory because we hit a lot of, of problems when we do it as a server side rendering and stable state. But right now it's working quite well and we can evolve super fast and have um, features super, super well done and <laughs> in really fast. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> I'm still using this. is uh, our, our CMS that we do that it's just to, to show you that this is a Gilotina React that we personalize it with some more things inside. This, for example, it's a management of filters that it has track drops, some areas for photos, from there or there. But we just do this way because we have a Gilotina program, so we don't want to, we want to, to be fast to do things. And, and evolve super quick to the version. Cool. Okay, so another one that we are kind of uh, really proud of is a uh, a big data project. This is a, uh, an electricity company. Well, it's a, pro, a, a company that works for electricity. It's called Data, and they work about gathering all the information from consumption of electricity, and they need to provide uh, reports uh, to the final uh, final consumer about what they've been using, what, how they can uh, spend less money on, on electricity, or how, how, they, how they can be more ecological. The, the main problem that they have is that they have a lot of data that comes from a big cluster where they are analyzing that data, and but they don't know how to show it, uh, to the user. Right now, they are um, they create PDF reports and they send that PDF reports. It's quite uh, 
great, but it's in a reasonable direction. They cannot control what uh, the final customer sees. So we decided to create a PDT environment for them that uh, gets all the data from the aggregation that is on the Hadoop cluster. And finally, we are, have a front end application built with React that allows us to define the reports and how they want to see the reports and different kinds of reports that they are going to see. These reports then can be generated to PDF if they want us to continue to send them to the mail to the, to the final client, or they can just create web applications that are embedded on the, on the utility uh, website. So at the end, the final user can see in real time how the data is being aggregated on their purchasing website. So this, this application, it's uh, built with uh, two pilotinas, one for storing the report design information, that it's uh, CSS, uh, what is this, the different layouts that we are going to see a structural demo about that. And then there is a React application that is just connecting to this uh, pilotina and storing all this information. Then there is a data pilotina where here it's much more scaling because some of, some of these companies has hundreds of thousands of clients and there is a lot of information that uh, stores all the yearly, monthly information for each user and serves this information to the a script that gets rendered on the utility website. There is a security process with service account that allows us to provide that nobody can see information that it's not uh, its own and that the, the utility can uh, uh, delegate the, the security to service account. So here we will see uh, a bit uh, the demo of it. It's a simple materials front end React application, quite easy to develop on the UI perspective. The editor that you're seeing is uh, one is called React Page. React Page is uh, what was called our editor a long time ago. It's a good editor, quite complex, but allows you to create different blocks and plug and play different things and create a lot of things. Information. For example, in this case, we're going to drop a new uh, graphic that we want to put uh, just on top of this, of this banner where we can define which are the, the keywords that we want to uh, display. Then we can um, edit uh, existing layer, existing reports, and define new, new layers. A bit similar to the way that Volto is doing things, just with instead of uh, Volto, it's and all the data that you are seeing here, it's uh, generated through your RPC, through these variables that you see in the year, the saved economic percentage, and this is the model from Bilutina that it's in, in JSON fields that it's uh, um, saved from, from the other cluster. Besides defining the reports and storing them, we can generate them, we can define specific CSS for each uh, of these. Uh, Elements and then you can define this like what you do on the web page. And finally, you define the service tokens. You are delegating these tokens to the utility so they can um, embed on their websites their own clients' uh, web application. Quite simple uh, React application um, that allows a lot of forward to the client to define, to allow the final client to define how they want to see their report, reports and define which elements they want to see on their consumption analysis. One of the conclusions that I would like to point out is that uh, editors like React Page work really well with Vivitina, like any other environment, because it's store JSON at the end, and we have a JSON field that you can store wherever you want there, but it's a JSON schema validated. But editors are hard, no matter where we are talking about. Uh, there is a lot of work, and you need to uh, adapt things to your own needs has its cons and its pros. Also, one of the things of the project is that we need to scale up. And at the beginning, we scaled up using co groups because we, we there is a lot of data. And we did at the same time a test with Postgres and with lots, lots of data. We were able to scale really fast with, uh, with Postgres. So we decided to end up with just Postgres and duplicating Postgres on different environments. So 
another, let's see, we have time. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go fast because it is only five minutes more. Uh, this is another project that was a clone site project that we've been having for a long time. Uh, complex workflow, more than 20 steps, with a lot of security for industrial world. And in this case, we didn't use uh, we didn't use Vivetina, but what we use is Grant, a built application that allows us with Angular to provide a nice UI that it's easy to use for industrial environments with lots of numbers, lots of tables, a lot of columns. A lot of security or lot of information. So we ended up with a with grant application on top of Chrome without any problem. Lally, another project, it's a SaaS software created for musicians. So they push their music to Lally and people can download cards to, to uh, give to people to download their music after the after the concert. Uh, it's backed up by Yudina, but the front end is grant. Cool. So we could use grants on the clone side and on the guillotine backend without any problem. Thank you, Eric. You did an amazing job. You can see the, the Lally project. Uh, it's quite simple. Music musicians can register on, on the site and they push their music, they subscribe to the service, and they can generate the PDF with a uh, unique QR codes so people can download the, the menu that they push. I'm going to go. Okay. Then there is Flaps, my new uh, startup that it's it's an inside engine uh, uh, software as a service. That's uh, its focus is to get all the possible inside information from your information. Uh, we don't gather all the information. We just select what is the proper information that may be useful, and we analyze and get the last uh, lines. It's Vivutina in the center. Vivutina manages the core information of all flaps. It has connections with uh, NATS, so streaming queue, similar to Kafka. It has multiple indexers. We have file storage, object storage, our system. We are using Vivutina as an operations and training in order to train machine, machine learning models as a domain for the REST API, as a cluster scheduler to schedule tasks to be done on the Kubernetes cluster. Even with GraphQL and Adrian integrated properly, they provide a nice GraphQL interface so uh, front end people can build uh, easy, uh, easily applications on top of it. Our conclusions JSON is really great at the rest of the API. But internally, we are using Protobuffer and, and GRPC because it makes us a faster um, introspection and, fast, and faster speed. In order to connect multiple services in different languages, like for example, we use Rust and we use Python a lot, and it works quite well. Streaming and even driven architectures are really powerful, and any software that needs to scale should at least be able to use that. And Rust is an amazing language that integrates really well with Python. I think your sidecar is in order to provide kind of a sidecar for the Rust applications that you can connect to the CPO are really, really good. And GraphQL, as most of the uh, you may be testing, uh, it's it's great for aggregations and to provide a query language that uh, front ends doesn't depend too much on the rest of it. So I have I think few 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 minutes, so I'm going to go really fast on the roadmap. G7 is coming. We are starting already the branch from Vietina uh, Seven. We still continue with the idea of less is more. We want to integrate properly with the starlet. We want to uh, pickle, uh, we have to store instead of pickles also JSON and look about our object having a log system, a GraphQL experimental uh, add on uh, or on the core. And we are going to uh, create also a relation uh, subsystem. And Jordi wants to integrate servers. I'm rendering on the <laughs> 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 The uh, branch is also going to be uh, a great on it uh, with Angular 11. And it is going to uh, use the schema from as a dependency. Uh, we will try to just go to the uh, final release and we have to make sure we can have the API and some things, more documentation. 
is the margin of perfectness. You see? And perhaps I could do two those with from Miller to Namoto to make out of the world of Miller to Namoto inspiration and also to add a lot of people, perhaps Dodo, perhaps Slate, or Act or something else. But then just go with test the B and try to do the job. Good. And what else do we have? Well, in the Dinamoto, there is a bit of uh, definition that uh, Victor wrote here um, some um, features that uh, they want to add into Roto in order to provide much more support on, on the building API. There's some differences. We have dynamic behaviors, for example, or searching point is a bit different and a bit powerful in some cases than the clone one. Uh, so we need to adapt and create this layer that provides this, this interconnection. Also the sharing component is quite different. And well, all the beauty has seven um, milestone, this is the sixth one, it's on the GitHub. All these issues and beauty are written there. And if anybody wants to help with us with this uh, milestone, it's more than welcome. And I really want to uh, say thanks to everyone. Thanks to everybody contributing to the Guillotina. It's a really amazing community and I really appreciate it. And thank you, Jordi, also for, for helping on the on the project. <laughs> and so that, that's okay. Um, and the thing that that's all. Hey, great. Thanks, Ramona and Jordi. That was a fantastic, uh, informative discussion on Guillotina and the roadmap and all the things that you guys have been doing. I was really excited to be able to attend and I'm really glad that you guys were able to present to us this time. Um,